All right, we're back again with another commentary. This time it's Space Venture. I did say I was playing Codename Iceman, but in the middle of playing Codename Iceman, uh, Space Venture, which was a Kickstarter created by the two guys from Andromeda, Mark Crow and Scott Murphy, along with Chris Pope, uh, created this wonderful game. Uh, it was eight years in the making, I believe roughly eight, nine years in the making. Uh, their Kickstarter went through a lot. Um, they had a lot of unfortunate things happen. Uh, Scott's health was an issue, a number of other things. Life in general, right? Um, I was fortunate to be one of the uh, one of the underground people, if you will, um, who was out to help promote the game. And as such, I was able to, uh, when they were releasing beta copies of the game, I was able to play the game as a beta copy and uh they release it in different iterations right so you know sometimes it's just a first part of the game then a little bit more fix a couple of those bugs so you keep getting a little further so when i played it as the beta version i was able to despite the bugs back in the in the beta version despite those bugs i was still able to complete the game so when they did this release um naturally far fewer bugs than were in the beta versions but there were still a number of bugs one of them um was when you try to pick up ruder's head um you'll see later on when you try to pick up ruder's head it's not able to get picked up but there was a trick where someone said hey if you actually like overlap the two then you can pick up ruder's head so they are actually working on fixing that and from what i understand an early release in uh october uh like the first couple weeks of october there should be a, another release that should fix some of these bugs. So here we are, we are Ace Hardway. Uh, we've been brought onto the ship to basically find out what's going on. Uh, this app called the iMom, which seems kind of annoying at first, but it actually plays a crucial part later in, in the game, will pop up and tell you, hey, I'm just trying to take care of you. Now, when you get into this room, uh, if you're paying attention, you saw how I got into this room. Uh, if you look closely, the shirt dangling there and stuff like that, and the, the guy sleeping, clearly a reference to Space Quest, because that is clearly supposed to be Roger Wilco sleeping there. So I thought that was kind of cool that they did these little Easter eggs. So um, <laughs> when you come over, you'll notice that there's this scene here, right? So looks like a mess, uh, which is probably what you would expect from Roger Wilco, right? Uh, but this puzzle, um, this one had me for a while because when not this time because that like i said i'd already played it in the beta version but uh when i first played it in the beta version i could not figure out how to do that where i just got those other bolts because that thing in the corner um the game uh, the like the ui is a little weird and the uh the click and the drag to move things is very different but the game is absolutely, in my view, it's a beautiful game. <laughs> um, and this is, I mean, no joke, this is sort of what it looked like in beta. So they already had something this good looking in beta. Like there's the difference from the beta versions, the number of them that they had to here. Literally, it's they fixed the bugs and then they filled in stuff. So uh, if you play this game or if you watch my playthrough that's on the channel, you'll notice that um, almost all the, all the, all the uh, dialogue has speaking parts. And so in the beta version, like you might get one or two lines and then the rest was maybe just text that they said, hey, you know, we're going to fill in later. We're just trying to, you know, put lines here and there to fix it and stuff like that. So and then they've um, they've added a bunch of fluff if you will, I guess you could say, um, that really enhanced the game. And they did like some, you know, better scenes and stuff like that to kind of clean stuff up. But this is, this is literally how it looked in beta, this really great polished game. So what they did is they fixed it, the, the bugs and such. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, I was just laughing because of that death scene. Um, they fixed the bugs and such and, it just made it a really, 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 really great game. I mean, some would say eight years is too long to wait. Um, but for me, 
maybe because I got to play the beta version of it, which was very buggy and sometimes very frustrating. Because it is buggy, because you're really enjoying the game and suddenly you're stuck. But um, I, I really enjoy this game. Like, easy 10 out of 10 for me. I thought it was a really fun game. I thought it was really well done. And Ruder, who is your little <laughs> companion there, may be the best companion in any game ever. Like, Ruder is absolutely cute. He's adorable. He's fun. And he is also very useful. But he, he, you will see he has such a personality himself in this game. Like, if you watch the uh, regular playthrough that I did, or if you, if you happen to be playing the game yourself, uh, he has such a great personality that at first it doesn't show. Like, here it doesn't seem like it shows too much. But I like some of the things that he does, like when he's standing there, his his tail will wag, and it, you know, like he kind of wiggles his butt a little bit. And it's so small little details that I really, really liked about this game. And later on, when something happens and Ruder has to basically take over, it's absolutely amazing. Now, one of the things that uh, I didn't like, and it's clipped out from this one, um, but you can see, like, I looked up at the at the screw to see what kind of screw it is. And I forgot to click out of the window initially. And so I actually couldn't unscrew that thing. So I kind of wish that if, they, if you had the zoomed in view, that you could still unscrew something. Like, it happens at the vent previous, too, where you look at the vent to see the kind of bolt that it requires. It'd be kind of cool if you could just still unscrew it with that view in. And this is where I was talking about where the bug happened. Um, where once the the turtle morph <laughs> appears out of the toilet, um, I wasn't able to grab Ruder's head, but someone said, hey, if you kind of make the two overlap, then you can. So I was able to actually get Ruder's head here. But like I said, that's one of the features or bugs, if you will, that they're going to be fixing in the future. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really weird is, and I still don't know what the pattern is, like as, as Ace is doing this, he'll see, he goes, hmm, I'm sensing a pattern. And I have no idea what this pattern that Ace was supposedly sensing. I just basically kept going to different toilets and I knew it's always a third toilet so I just go to a different toilet, come back to the third, go to a different toilet, go to the third until it eventually does what it's supposed to do. And then so here we are now um, Ace has been pulled under with the turtle morph and now we are in control of Ruder. This is one of the first times that we get to see how cool Ruder is. And uh, just to be clear, you're supposed to turbo jet over there, or thruster. I think it's called thrusters. Yeah. Um, and you dive off, and then when you go to exit this area, um, it, it'll suddenly show Ace, and then now you can try to hook line him, which kind of works out for a while until the turtle morph gets tired of Ruder when you try to shock him, and he will get revenge and smack you around. And upon being destroyed, it wakes up Ace. So you'll notice that you get three of the legs and his body and his head here, so there's you're clearly missing a leg somewhere. <laughs> part that's coming up here. This part originally, uh, in the, I was able to get it first try this time, but in the beta version, that part took me forever. Like I kept swinging and then he would knock me back. So uh, it seems like they might have just, if you figure out what to do, they just let you get a bypass on it. So there's Ruder's other leg and now we got the turtle morph thing in this giant blender, so you can already guess what has to happen next. Is you have to figure out the pattern for turning on the blender. And so that um, if you watch the play the normal playthrough, you'll notice that was a bug where the alarm switch at the top goes off. And the first time it did it, I was able to use just by clicking on it and make it reset, but the second time I actually had to go up there. So you have to figure out the blender pattern. It's pretty much, what is that, right to left? And uh, you basically turn him into a drink of some kind, which we'll find out here in a minute is right there. 
So what you'll do is you'll pick up Rooter, pick up that little piece, because you're going to need that here in a very quick moment. So when you go to use the only escape pod that is left, it malfunctions because it overheats. And sure enough, there's that screw thing. This, I, I will admit, the attaching the bolt to Rooter's nose when you have Rooter's head is a pain sometimes, because when you unbolt, the bolts continue to shift in the pattern, so you're not sure which bolt you just used. Um, so that was kind of a pain, but overall, eh, it's really trivial, really trivial. Uh, the dialogue, uh, for example, on this portion where he's like, uh, escape pod, shouldn't we be doing that thing that you're supposed to do and like escape before this place blows? So the dialogue in everything in this game is actually fantastic. And so not only is it visually appealing, but it's also very audible uh, appealing, I guess you could say. Because the jokes are great, the the characters are also all very, very, uh, I don't want to say realistic because it's a sci-fi thing, but they're all identifiable, I guess is probably the better word. Um, you'll meet a number of other characters throughout, so um, there's a couple that you'll meet at NURB's place, um, where I do have a question about something that I'll bring up when we get there. Um, there's also the person who rescues you from this. Uh, you'll see who that is in a moment. Uh, but yeah, so there are a number of uh, characters that are all just really well written. Like, I get that it took eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they delivered. It's not like it took eight years and you're like, nah, it wasn't worth it. Nah, it was worth it. This was a damn good game. And I'm very glad to have uh, backed it up and gotten my copy and fortunate enough to also play the beta version when it was out as well, because I absolutely love this game. And this is a game that I feel like I could replay a number of times, even though it's there's nothing different. There's no alternate endings or anything like that. It's just a very fun and relaxing game. And like I said, because it's so well done and the, the dialogue and stuff like this, <laughs> that is actually... Uh, Rooter's head right there is actually the the avatar I was using on the uh, Space Venture forum, the uh, the backer forum, uh, where his head is floating right there. Uh, I loved it. Uh, so good. So as you can see, um, Ace has just been saved uh, by someone who knows him all too well. So you now meet Scraps. And then Scraps will take you, uh, well first, before we get to the house, we're going to do a intermission where we see this man-child person thing is doing something about some kind of new reality thing. He's with the Centauri Corp, which will come into play later, because eventually we will meet our heroes, the two guys from Andromeda. They are tied to this individual and the uh, Centauri, or however you want to pronounce it, corporation. And again, the I-bomb appears and talks to him. And we cut back. And an Ace is telling his story about how he's pretty much had the worst day of his life. Uh, not only did he lose his truck, but he also lost his job. And also got Rooter <laughs> smashed to pieces. And Scrap says, hey, you know what? It's fine. It'll be fine. But you're putting Rooter back together this time. Which, of course, um, <laughs> in the, it, it was fun. In the beta version, the thing you have to do to get Rooter back together is the same as in this. But uh, in the beta version, it had a thing where it would quickly chew up through your memory. Which is something they quickly fixed and stuff like that. But uh, I remember that you'd you would have to try to fix Rooter as quickly as you could, doing what you have to do, and it's not easy because you have to push these uh, chips back on top of their number and, and the proper uh, facing and stuff like that. You'll see it here in a moment. Um, but yeah, uh, this game is so good, and they even included like that random arcade game that you can randomly play, and it actually works. Like I'll play it for just like a few rounds, I think, in this game. 
I think I recorded that when I was playing it. Um, <laughs> but it's it's pretty fun. And tons. So there, yeah, so there is the arcade game that you can actually play. Um, and if you, well, I'll wait till this finishes. If you look, tons of Easter eggs everywhere, especially in Scrappy's, uh, or Scraps's, uh, like junkyard area. If you look, there is the cassette of Soundwave uh, sitting there. Uh, there's like TIE fighter wings and stuff like sitting around. So they shoved thousands of. Uh, <laughs> of uh, like little Easter eggs, if you will. And uh, one of my favorites is when you are in Scraps's junkyard. Um, I don't think I focused it on this one because I was just looking to go through the game and beat it and finish it. But if you look closely, uh, when you are in the junkyard, you'll I'll go to it here in a minute now that I've fixed Ruder, or almost fixed Ruder. Um, if you look closely, like you can drop the uh, the magnetized head onto the junkyard, and when you lift it, when you've got something that is not like metallic, you'll see a bunch of things falling off of the metallic head. And if you look closely, what some of those things are that are falling, they actually took or made a replica, I should say, of the <laughs> the Atari Twenty Six Hundred game. So I don't, I'm sure you have heard the story um, that the Atari 2600 ET game was such a failure that they took all these copies and said, just give them all back to us, and they dumped them in a landfill. There's even been specials on TV about this whole ET 2600 landfill thing. So I thought it was great that in Scraps of the Junkyard, um, you'll find a number of these ET covers just falling down in front of the uh, trash. And this is the part that I was talking about when, when it was in beta, you'd have to try to hurry up and do it as quick as you could uh, because it chewed the memory so quickly. But again, that's, that's in beta. This is the full version. That does not exist. Like I was taking my sweet time spinning these numbers around trying to get them to work um, because I knew that was an issue in this. Um, it's kind of fun, this part, because you have to do like a number of different things. There is one that is kind of uh, one of the things that's kind of pointless where it taps to tell you if if it's all good or not. Really, all you need to do is take the one that pushes the numbers into the position, and then the other one is the sealing one. So that way you can seal the busted um, circuits, and then it automatically turn green. So. The one that kind of tells you if the circuits are bad or not is actually kind of useless. So I'm not sure why that one was put in there. I don't know if originally maybe it was designed that you have to test it. Like once you push the chips in, you have to test it and then drop the other one down to seal the circuit or to, um, I almost said cauterize, but whatever. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, now, uh, so now we're gonna go we grab the hoverboard, and then uh, when you step outside, the first time you step out there, you'll see a meteor shower. But if you go out and come back in, the meteor shower is done and finished. Use the wrench to grab that crystal thing, and you're going to need to find a total of three of those in the game, because that is what is going to charge your battery thing in your new ship you're about to build. I think uh, now that I'm realizing, when you first come out into Scraps' area, you can click on that area down in the lower right where he's working. And if you click on him, he'll tell you, hey, you can actually go into my uh, you know, into my junkyard and look for, um, look for pieces to see if you can make a ship, which is exactly what we're doing. So one of the things we want to do is send Ruder through there. He'll knock down that pole. And don't worry, just leave it down there, because that's the only place you'll need it. And then from here, what you'll have to do is actually, I had forgotten, but you have to turn on the booty sniffer to see the thing that is 
uh, the other stone because you can see once I finish getting out all these apps that I'm quote, quote, uh, downloading just for fun because I didn't know if any of them would actually ever complete downloading like the Fuber you actually use in the game but all these other ones uh, I have no idea if they actually ever completely quote unquote download in the game to be actually useful um, but you'll see over to the right there's kind of like this heat like smoky thing coming out so you can tell that one of the meteors probably landed over there, uh, and you just need to uh, find out how to get it. So send Rooter through, and you can see in, I think that's, what is it, Iron Iron Giant? So Booty Snoofer, turn him on over there, and then he can uh, jump in the eye. Or, there you go, do the, uh, the Rooter detach thing. And so once you do that, you can once again use the wrench, smash it, grab that piece. And the third one is out there in the junkyard. So you'll have to use the crane to get that. Um, make sure you have the hoverboard and that pole, or else uh, you'll basically just hoverboard out there and the hoverboard will stop and you'll sink and die. So this is a crane. So there's your pad thing, and that's where you're going to have to drop everything off. Um, a lot of the times, because I kind of vaguely remembered where most of the ship pieces were, um, I literally just most often not just dropped the, like I stopped the, the magnet, and I just used the top of it to kind of brush the uh, junk off of the uh, ship pieces, rather than use the magnet to lift and move, lift and move, lift and move to clear it which uh, I don't know which way is the quicker way because the way I did it in the beta version was like lift and move, lift and move. And uh, I just thought, well, this time I'm just gonna just turn off the magnet, just use the top to just smush things aside. And now we're trying to find the second piece. There is a total of, um, what is that? You have the left side, the right side, and the body. So there's a total of three pieces of the ship to find here. And the body is the, the most difficult one to get to. So you can see that I'm scraping the thing along the side. Um, the body is the most difficult one to get to because it is the largest piece. So it has the most stuff to try to get off of. And it's also, um, I guess you would say, the heaviest. So it kind of, when you try to lift it, it kind of drags a little bit. Um, and so there's like a, a brief little bug there where you go to the right and it doesn't pan. But if if you actually just click right there, it'll he'll get on mule. And that's another one of the bugs that they're supposedly fixing in early October. So now we have the second piece, which will be the other jet. And so now we just need to go find the body and then the uh, the other meteorite. And you'll, you'll tell, you'll, sorry, you'll know exactly where the meteorite is um, because as you move the uh, crane along, you'll see the same heat uh, smoke emissions, if you will. So you'll know exactly where, and to be clear, uh, each, each item you need to find is it's in its own section here. So you won't find like two pieces in the same area. So you can see the wavy heat signature here. So we know that the, uh, the meteorite thing is there, and there it is. So drag it all the way over, drop it. And that does not uh, end the scene. So when we come back, it'll be there on the ground. But now we need to get the body of the ship. And once again, you can see that I'm just trying to push and uh, knock stuff over rather than... Because I can see the top of the, of the body of the ship. But because it's so big, if it has like, any junk on it, it's like literally really difficult to lift. There's the body, and you can see, like, if you lift too quickly, it's not coming up. It's got to be slow and easy. So you can see I've cleaned up.
cleared off both sides. And now should be able to lift it with some effort, but again, quickly will mean it'll fall. So this was a struggle to do it slow, 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 <laughs> and then drop. And so you can see the meteorite is there on the ground. So we're going to use the wrench to smash it and grab the third and final piece. And then we're going to take this back to uh, the shop. And then when we go in here, what we'll do is, well, first a few things. You'll notice that that shaft opened, so that means something went wrong. And if you look, you have two burnt tubes, so we're going to go ahead and grab those. And as soon as you do, you get a voicemail from NURB saying, hey man, I heard what happened to you, come by sometime. And then the muffler thing, battery thing, fell out. So we need to replace that as well. And then you hit the talk icon to the little robot thing and say, Weldon, activate. And tell him what you want him to work on. And you have to do it for each connection of the ship. So the left side, right side, and then the, the front to weld all those pieces together. And you, you can make it happen really fast by telling him to activate and then walk off screen into another screen and come back and he'll be done. So you can just keep doing that until, and if you don't see him, like how he's not there, that means he's in the ship and you just need to walk off and come back again and he'll pop out of the ship eventually. Or you may need to go into the ship and see him and uh, Spark, Sparky, Spark, whatever his name is, there he is. All right, so now we're going to take a Fuber. We still have to fix part of the ship, but we're going to take a Fuber to NURBS. There's the woman who had the Chewbacca mask that became an internet sensation because she laughed nonstop in, the car, in her car. There's Buzz Lightyear. There's the, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh, the Star Wars parody. The, I see your Swartz is bigger than mine. Totally forget what that movie's called, but th that cat dog person thing is there. But anyway, this is who you want to talk to is Nurb and Earl. And basically, uh, Earl tells you about uh, Andromacon and how he's amped to go. And Nurb is like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, coming up. Um, is the thing, I think it's on this part. Might be the next time we come here. Yeah, it's the next time we come here. At any rate, there is, I'll wait till we get there. So we go to NURBS, because he says stop by. If you need a hose replacement, show him the hose replacement. He'll go back and say he can't find it. So what you're going to do is take the two hoses off of the, uh, the name display. So the hose and there and there. Because he does say you can take them. So we're going to fuber back. Replace those two. Now the three stones that we collected, put them in one at a time. And then there is your battery thingy. But we still need Weldon to do the welding thing. Uh, when you go in here, uh, your good buddy Scraps, I think I called him Scrappy earlier, but it's just Scraps. He tells you that he advertised for you on Angie's Fist, which is a reference to Angie's List. So you'll notice a number of uh, silly parodies like that. So we just got a call basically saying, hey, need help. And it's the two guys from Andromeda. So you know you want to help them. So. Last thing we need to do is get the battery sector thingy into the ship. And there you go.
And now the ship's pretty much ready to go. So click the seat, and then he comes up again. Let's you know that the thing uses the uh, poop for renewable energy, which when we were fixing Rooter, we saw the uh, the plans for it, so it makes sense. If you're wondering why poop recharges it. <laughs> then we are going to head off to go see the two guys from Andromeda. So in the beta version, uh, you could do the space bar and shoot these lasers. And they did nothing, like they would shoot through rocks and stuff like that. So this is one of the things they added is when you shoot the rocks, you see these little stars appear. When you fly by and collect them, those are the names of some of the high tiering uh, backers who backed um, Space Venture. So that's where their names are kind of hidden throughout the game is if you blast these rocks and then another place after you beat the game you'll find these glowing stars everywhere that you can also collect and get their names and then in the app uh, of your phone there's a thing called um, backer cards I think it is and then as you collect them all you'll know if you've collected them all because it'll actually show that it's been collected so you can see how many you need and how many you actually collected which I thought was a pretty cool and unique way to include the backers in the game And then right now I'm just shooting asteroids for the sake of shooting asteroids and collecting a few that are quick and easy. But uh, so when you select a destination, for example, we said the uh, Dominion Estates, uh, it'll tell you what you need to go to. It's like 42B and it'll tell you that 42B is up high and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that <laughs> I thought was funny is uh, in the beta version, you just fly through these houses, like these thousands of houses things, uh, in the full release. This was something that they uh, changed. You cannot fly through them. As you can see, I crashed into it. So they did so much to tighten up the game and really, really make it awesome. Um, but so what you're looking for here is this, like, you'll see a mess coming out of one particular place. And as you can guess, that is the two guys from Andromeda. So one of the things you're going to do is when you come out, you're going to look at that note that comes out right over there. And just keep in mind that number, the 640732, uh, well, at least in beta, it was a randomly generated number. So I haven't played this a second time to see if that number has changed, but I assume it has. Unless they wanted to make their life easy and just make it one combo. Now in beta, that bridge right there operated differently. You would have to step on a square, then Ruder would have to step on a square. And when you're both on a square, it unlock a, another square for each of you. So you had to keep going back and forth between Ruder and Ace. Um, but there was just a number of bugs as to if you tried to make Ruder go first or Ace go first. So I like that they simplified it and just made it a bridge. Because the going back and forth between Ruder and Ace to just cross this bridge was kind of just a time waste. You know, it didn't really add anything to the game because you already knew what you had to do. It's like, okay, I go for it. Okay, you know, Ruder, you go for it. I go for it. Okay, Ruder, you go for it. So I like it that they just did away with that uh, puzzle, if you will and just made it a bridge to cross. And I absolutely love that the two guys put themselves in this game again. This <laughs> this portion here of fixing the pump is, uh, I think it's great. Um, what I love is when he starts taking stuff out, uh, you start taking control of Rooter because he takes all the pieces out because he needs to fix it and find out what's jammed in there which is that coconut which he just threw up there um, but then he can't find any of the pieces right so you have to as Ruder basically get on the other side and pull the piece down <laughs> and what I love doing is I just pull all the pieces down <laughs> and he'll start yelling I go hey Ruder is that you and then ow you know just so many just really great moments but essentially you have to pull the pieces in order that you see on that map um, displaying up there so 
just getting him down there and stuff like that will eventually fix that pump just like that and success so you're gonna want to grab that you know i don't think that come to think of it that coconut doesn't come into play later on actually and then, so now we're just gonna mess around with their stuff and got a twinkie if you look at their thing first i have to look at it and then put the twinkie there and you get an impression of their nose the other thing is the uh I don't even know what that is. It's supposed to be, I guess, uh, deodorant. You have to unscrew it, pop it out, put it on their nose, so you get an impression of his nose. And you'll notice that you can easily see the one that says crow, but there's one that says Murphy over here, and you have to touch the noses to those screens. And then that'll bring down the face box thing. And then you'll see the Centauri video game, which is Cluck Eager. And this is based off of, uh, what's the name of that game? It's like Seven Nights of something or whatever. You basically have to survive as Cluck Eager uh, for like seven nights or something like that. However, if you're not into that, you can actually, um, after the play starts and after you see this like intro, you can actually just hit escape and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to play this portion of the game. And then it'll automatically just go into the next part. So I have actually never played the the seven days of whatever it's called, or seven nights, seven days, seven nights. Um, but so I did the same thing for here. I just pretty much said hit escape, and then you kind of see all these weird things get electrocuted, and now you're stuck being electrocuted. So now, once again, Reuter has to do something. So if you go outside, need to find a way to short it and what shorted it last time was the coconut so if you use rooter to grab a coconut it'll short it once more which will free ace and then ace will say well i guess i'll fix it and he goes in and you don't have to do the whole repair thing again it just automatically fixes it just a, a quick cutscene. So Ace uh, briefly talks to the two guys, and then he's on his way out. Then he meets this woman named Veronica, who complains that she is here because other people are complaining about the odor surrounding this dome. And he says, hey, yep, I fixed it. Don't worry about it. then Ace will be on his way. Then we take off and launch again. However, this time, <laughs> and I thought this scene was so cool. Uh, the parody of the song and the guy, I don't know who it is. <laughs> I have no idea who voices this guy, but he did a great job of like, you were speeding, okay? That's gonna be a hundred credits. Just the way he talked was <laughs> so good. And this, this officer uh, shows up again later on, but not, this time not to arrest you. He actually goes after Ruder. So he tells you, hey, fix your, your leak, and you have to do it with Ruder. This part, um, I will say, uh, can be difficult. The key is to do Ruder's bursts in very, very short bursts. Do not do a long burst or else you're just going to float out into space forever. So you have to identify where the leak's at, get to it, touch it, and then he'll say, all right, good, get back in the ship. So again, same thing, do short bursts to get back into the ship. And then the ship will go pop, 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 boom, and where you'll actually end up is Takonova. 
which is perfect because you have a ship that requires poop to refuel. Uh, but then that diesel thing just took off with all the poop. So what are you going to do? Well, a tour bus just showed up, which I said, oh, I better get in, get in there before they see it. Make sure you grab that quarter. Uh, you don't have to grab it before, but you're going to need it when they start singing. Now, when I did the the regular playthrough, I literally let that song play, for, I think, for about five minutes. Mostly because the song is rather incredible, silly, and fun. So, <laughs> the only way to get it to end is if you have that quarter. Uh, in the song, they'll talk about how they'll you know do stuff for free, you can get stuff for free, but not without gratuity. So what you do is you put the 25 cents in their tip jar. So the tip jar hasn't appeared yet because I'm just letting it play through the song. But once I start walking away, they'll put a tip bar or a tip jar up in there. And there's the tip jar. Once you put the tip jar in the coin, they're like, cool. And then they'll actually serve the little aliens who will devour their food. And I thought it was so good when they all finish eating and they all start going, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. So they all run to the bathroom, which guess what? That now refills the toilet and that means you can get it. And then, so there's a guy from the first ship where you're like, hey, don't I recognize you? And he's like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> and then when he goes into the bathroom, he's like, I'm not cleaning this up. So you get another voicemail from Nurb saying, hey, something's wrong with Earl. I think you need to come by and see him. So this, uh, I had forgotten briefly how to get the uh, poop, but you actually have to click on it. And then click out. And by the way, do not open the back because that's just going to kill you. But you basically start to plant a course somewhere else and then it'll show your ship sitting there and then you click on the uh, where the poop thing is and he'll move his ship to the side and get it. And this is, uh, this is actually a bug that they... I just realized that they didn't fix. So after we move our ship, you'll notice that the fuel, so say you go here, now you click your ship over to the full thing, and then there you go. But you'll notice next time we hit the navigation that it's still gonna say that our fuel is empty. I just realized that, because I remember seeing the red flashing every time I hit navigation, and it shows that it's empty. So this time when you go to see him, he walks straight in. And this is the part that I was wondering about. So there's this girl, right? She's a waitress here. And Ace says, hey, don't I know you from somewhere? And she's like, no. And goes, you look familiar. And, you know, they go back and forth. And she seems to play a important part in Ace's life. But they don't really explain how. Because there is a portion later where you have to, um, let's just say, uh, save Ace's memories. And so Earl, who's the frog dude, Nurb, who is that guy, um, uh, Rooter, and uh, the junkyard guy. Oh my gosh, I totally blanked on his name. Those four are part of the memory restore, which makes sense because they are all significant to Ace. But her, that waitress, is also one of the memory pieces you have to put together. And that that part feels like it's a, uh, an untold story or something got cut because it's not it's not clear why she would be such a significant memory to Ace as to. Uh, making sure that her memory remains. So 
So now we got another job from a uh, lizard guy to go to Taxorus. And so there was no navigation point to it. So what I did, and I think this might have been a bug. Um, I don't know if they know about that one. But what I did is basically when I went into the, uh, the worm portal, the hyperhole thing, whatever you want to call it, that basically gives you the access to jump to different areas, this thing over there. Um, I just literally went to one of the numbers that I didn't recognize that I'd gone to previously. So even though I picked Dominion Estates, it's telling me that x 42 is above, I was looking for something I had not gone into yet, so... When they re-release this, which is here, uh, when they re-release this, uh, the, or not re-release, sorry, when they update this in October, uh, I'm definitely going to play this through again and see if that is something that's been fixed. Like I said, I actually really enjoy the game, so replaying this game again, not a problem. So when you come out here, you're going to want to look at those goggles, and you're going to get those goggles because you're going to need them when you're traversing the desert. So there's the thing you have to repair. Now where are all the pieces? Yeah. So turn on router. Do some digging right there. And you're gonna get something. So there's part of it. Yeah. Now where's the rest? Well, the rest is quite messy. So uh, I can't remember where specifically it's at. I want to say it's lower right, upper right. Ruder will find, because I, I wandered so much in this desert, um, Ruder will eventually find, uh, when you're using the booty sniffer, he'll eventually find something that he detects. And so that's where you're going to dig. And when you do, something awakens. I wish I could tell you specifically where it was at in the desert, but like I said, I kept wandering around, so I am not 100% sure where it's at. And the desert isn't vast, like it's probably like four or five screens uh, up and down and then across before you hit a dead end and it doesn't like let you actually proceed further up or it doesn't let you proceed further down or proceed further to the right. So there is a limit to this desert, uh, despite what it looks like when I'm running around blindly. Um, there is actually a limit to it, so don't be too panicked that you have to wander aimlessly. And at first I thought it was this hill here, because this is an odd hill where, like, normally Rooter climbs over hills, but he can't climb over that hill. So I could have swore it was that one, but it's not. And, like, no amount of touching or digging. See how that hill Rooter can't climb? Um, so that's not it, despite how that hill definitely stands out from all the rest. Like, all the rest look like smooth transitions of hills, and that one does not. So keep on searching, and there it is. So I guess if you look for that unusual hill, that'll tell you where it's at. And there's a thumper, and oh! We go Dune style with the worm. So once you're inside the worm, first thing you should grab is that thumper. Because what you want to do is, before you get past that third nerve ending that's at the top, uh, you want to make sure you use the thumper to keep getting reversed back. Because the pieces that you need are all floating around inside his stomach. Now, to get out of this, what you have to do, to explain it real quick, is you have to go all the way to the third one, hit it with the thumper, go to the second one, hit it with the thumper, go to the first one, hit it with the thumper in really quick uh, succession, and he'll vomit you out back near the front. Now, if he happens to vomit you out without all the pieces, so if you start putting it together and you realize you're missing a piece, like I did, uh, what you can do is just basically walk into the desert, just one screen into the desert past where that equipment is at, use the thumper on any desert screen, and he'll come back and pick you up, and you can proceed to try to get that last piece. Because if you go to the third piece, this is what happens. Or if you go to the third hole, that's what happens. A thousand years later, you are ejected out of his bowels, um, devoured. And I think I do hit one of the bugs. I can't remember if I left it in the recording where I end up going past that third hole. 
but then I don't die. I just go into this black area where you don't see a background of the creature. So there are still like a, a few bugs, but there's so like here it is. This is it. So you can see that technically I should have died, similar to what we just saw where I am ejected. But it didn't happen. So what I'll eventually have to do is restore because there's no way out of this area, no matter what you do. <laughs> so we're back, and like I said, you want to grab all the pieces that you can. Once you do, hit the nerve endings with the thumper, starting with the third, the second, and the first. And again, if you do miss any of the pieces, uh, you can just use the thumper to come back and try to grab them. So even if you grab two, go to the third one, bam, 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 bam. See, he'll vomit you out. You could do that technically. So, let's see. so what you have to do, I can already tell. It looks like I'm missing a piece. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to click the hand on it to get a better zoomy. And just <laughs> to make life simple, uh, the first pieces you want to drop down are not those side pipes, by the way, because that's just going to make your life hell like I did. The piece you want to drop down is the middle piece, that piece. So what you want to do is turn it, and you can see the two pipes poking up. You want to flip that piece upside down so that it goes into the, into the base below. So I'm already making my life way more complicated than it had to be. <laughs> and you can tell that antenna doesn't work because I am actually still missing one piece. But I've, spoiler alert, I've not figured out yet that I am still missing a piece. It isn't until I turn this thing upside down that I realize ah, I'm missing a piece. <laughs> So you can see clearly there's another piece that should go on top, and that is not where the antenna goes because something needs to hook all these tubes up. And I thought I grabbed all the pieces, but I clearly did not. And so what happens when you do the side tubes, if they get to the side, sometimes they are difficult to drag back around like that piece to get it back into the middle. And you can see, I'm like, why doesn't it go there? Because you're missing a piece. So what we're going to have to do is go back into the worm and get that final piece. So as you can see, just walk one desert off to the right, use the thumper, he comes back. Make sure you grab the thumper again so you can get out and grab the other piece. Now we're good to go. So hit the third, hit the second, hit the first, and vomit back out. So now we have all the pieces. This is, you're going to see how quickly when you do it right, when you do the centerpiece first. Do the other centerpiece. So now with the two centerpieces, you can definitely tell which tubes go where whole thing becomes infinitely easier. And there we go. Job well done, right? Well, Ace is getting about to mess it up because he says, oh, you know, this isn't water. And it's more of a alcoholic type drink, apparently, that is being manufactured. But this leads to, uh-oh, the cop again. And again, I love his dialogue and how whoever the actor is, how he read the dialogue. It's so good. And so Ace is arrested and this woman shows up. And Ruta goes up to her and she introduces herself as Agent Veronica. So now she's like, well, I gotta go save Ace. Bye! And leaves Ruta behind. So Ruta 
it's funny, so when you grab the thumper as Ruder, it's Ace's voice that says, Got it! <laughs> uh, so as Ruder, you're going to go into the ship, and this is the part, like I said, where you get to really see Ruder's personality. Uh, when you, <laughs> it's so cool. When he takes off as a Ruder. And... We see Ace, who is uh, getting a rough time from his good pal. So it seems uncharacteristic of him, but then it all makes sense. Look, it's Imom. And the Robocop and the man baby. <laughs> so you can see that Ace has a face box on his face. Which is, I guess, where the face box would go. And clearly the Chromium Cop is on the, uh, on iMom's pay. So Ace shows up at Andromedacon, here to save Ace. Or Ace, uh, Ruder shows up at Andromedacon to save Ace. And so what you have to do is wait for the, um, announcement of face box to start, but we're going to head for that vat, or that vent, if you will. We just have to wait for the announcement of Facebox. And so there's Milo the man baby talking about Facebox. His face box isn't virtual reality, it's hyper reality. So he goes through his spiel talking about face box and he says, you know what, we don't want any of you to miss anything. Everyone here gets a face box. You get a face box, you get a face box, you get a face box. Well, you with the four heads, you don't get one. Just kidding, you have four heads, you get four, four face boxes. So anyway, after that spiel, we did see the Cyber Cop, or not Cyber Cop, the Chromium Cop show up. And what we have to do now is, as Ruder, go over there and let him see you, and then he gives pursuit. So as Ruder, you're going to have to lose him in the crowd. So basically go all the way to the left, run around a little bit, and then basically head back towards the middle, right about there and keep going back and eventually he'll if you lead him out to the back first and then around he'll say where did he go and all those star tour people will start to surround him and once that happens you're good to go go up to the woman and it's her and she says hey all the doors are locked with a code but i can try to crack it but ruder has a better idea he just can go in once you're inside go to the app and use the thruster I think you have to do it twice. And you kind of have to thrust up high, not just anywhere. So at first I was just trying to jump, and thrust. Stay with the game first. And now you'll see it through the vent. It's so cool how you see the vent slowly light up and get brighter and brighter. So step on that, jump on the thing, click on that screen, say cancel memory. Yep. And so this part is kind of difficult. Not difficult as in, uh, you know, it's really, you could die or anything. But trying to figure out which way the face goes to make it align properly and then turning these pieces because the pieces aren't always very easy to click on to see which ones you do and you basically have to match the face completely so that nearly all the lines are gone. Ruder's is pretty easy because he has a huge face and his chest spells Ruder so you know which way Ruder faces but like the frog guy is insanely difficult to remember which way he faces. And 
and there's Nurb, who's pretty easy because of the snout and everything like that. Makes it easy because most of his screen is the snout, and then you just you really just have to match his hair, and then the rest is easy. And here we are. So remember the significance of the waitress that randomly meets at Nurb's that says, do I know you? Well, she clearly plays a pretty big role in Ace's memory because she needed to be restored. So it's weird how he claims to know her, but then also has a memory thing of her, but then nothing actually comes of it. I think it would have been cooler if they used uh, Agent Veronica or Veronica from the uh, two guys dome thing, which is the same Veronica, but... So anyway, once you're awakened, Man Baby Milo comes back down and tries to convince you that you are having a Taco Nova induced delirium dream. And then the Eye Mom awakens. And she is pissed that she just can't take a five minute rest without things just going to hell. And it's time to teach everyone a lesson. And Ace pretty much says, you know what, I figured it out. You're trying to do this I'm on thing that tries to basically smother everyone. And she's like, fine, cut the cord. And so she starts destroying things. And what you basically have to do is run to that center platform. It's actually not that difficult. If you just click the center platform, Ace will eventually make his way there. And once you're there, um, click on the white light above. She'll lower herself and then you just climb in. And from here, you're literally at almost the end of the game. So this game, this part, there's the colors on the side. So there's three reds, three green, three blue, three purple, three yellow, and three blue, whatever. And so what you have to do is spin that thing around until you find the hot. So you can see all these colors, but they're not all lit up. You have to make sure that when you spin it, they're poking out a little bit and colored brightly. And you have to do it for each one, so you have to knock out all the light blue, all the purple. And if you're not fast enough, she'll she'll spin it and reset it on you, which I think happens a few times to me. Um, but you literally just have to keep going through. So now we're on the green, try to power through, and she'll do stuff like Ace. You know, what did I ever do to you? And then Scraps shows up, gives a little help. So this is pretty much like a rinse and repeat, like just quickly spin the things around until you can see the buttons and press them. So I think that she just reset it on me there. So I have to redo it again. And I don't know if there is a time limit. Like I see the time counting down on the upper left, kind of like when Ruder was out in space, it was also counting down. And I think there's another time where there is a counter, but I don't know if there is actually a limit, like if you don't do this in 10 minutes, like the iMom wins or whatever. But yeah, this, I mean, this part, I don't, I don't know if this is based on a puzzle, but it's, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it, of just clicking the arrows to keep, keep them moving. So you can hit all the buttons you need to hit. And then eventually, once you get down to the last color, she gets very pissed. <laughs> she no longer has the smiling face of the eye mom. Except it comes back, but looks a little crazy. And so now we got one more green to go. Keep spinning it until the green is there. And that's the last one. Just under 10 minutes. So I wonder if at 10 minutes, if it would have uh, exploded. So then A says, ah, you know, let me out of here. <laughs> and the I mom is like, I won't let you go. So you have to hit the button, run your wire thing to the button. <laughs> what you have to do is hit the defib and that'll short circuit and let you escape and satellite go boom get rocked around. There's uh, Milo the man baby and Veronica. 
and you have just saved the universe from an angry app called the iMom. Uh, with your good buddy, uh, Ruder, and, you know, everyone else who helped you along the way. And then the credits roll. There is a long list of credits. And uh, within the credits, when we get to the Kickstarters, uh, I am fortunate. I, I backed this uh, Kickstarter with a high enough amount of money to have my name in the credits as one of them. Uh, if you look for Thomas, it'll be in there. Right, coming up any minute now. We're on R. There's a lot of R apparently. S. A lot of S. A lot of S. <laughs> and then T. Thomas goes by. And then, um, because as I mentioned earlier, as being one of the special uh, few selected to be a part of the underground, as it was called, where we were out to promote Space Venture when the Kickstarter was first announced, um, my name, along with everyone else who was a part of the underground thing, also has their name elsewhere. Uh, if you go to the bathroom in NURBS, when you first walk in, so when you go to NURBS, you walk all the way to the back, all the way to the right, uh, is a bathroom. And in that bathroom, you'll see the credits with photos of those who designed the game, who are part of the team, not the underground team, but the actual production of this game. And if you continue walking, you'll see like a yellow uh, sign on the wall. When you click to view it closer, um, you'll see the underground folks who participated in uh, really spending our time advertising the uh, Space Venture Kickstarter when it first initiated, doing what we could to get the word out about the Kickstarter, which I felt very honored to be a part of, and uh, so glad that in the end the game was beautifully done, and I'm, I'm glad that I was a part of it all. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chris Pope. Thank all of you. And hey, uh, if you're listening to this and you've gotten this far on <laughs> uh, my talk through of Space Venture, I also thank you for hanging out. And there is my name, Thomas and Amy Logue. Uh, my name is Thomas. My wife's name is Amy. And so there we are. And uh, I want to thank you if you've listened this far. Uh, please click like and subscribe. Thank you.